Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I am happy to see you all here this morning. I hope that you had a rejuvenating break. You can go ahead and get yourself settled and journals open to page 130. I know that that green doesn't show up very well, so page 130 in your journal for today. And then just keep, take a couple of deep breaths. I know that I am finding a challenge in getting back into the flow today. So take a couple of breaths and bring yourself to be present in this moment, here in this place, surrounded by your lab mates. And then we'll get started. We'll start with a couple of announcements as usual. We're coming toward the end, so a lot of these um, announcements relate to that. The first thing I wanna do is talk about your action component for this week, week 14's action component. I admit that you might see, it might seem a little strange to you as you read through it. Um, after today's class and after Wednesday's class, it might be more comfortable for you to try out something new. Um, I'm guessing that it might be new for some of us, some of you. Uh, so just live your way into it. Um, just use all of your equipment when you go into the action component of this week 14. Today will be the last pack back question of the semester, and next week we will have a makeup time for pack back questions. If you've missed any over the course of the semester, you can go in and make those up if you choose to. Um, TA conversations, the sign up, if you have signed up on the clipboard, and you should look for an email from me and then you'll sign up for a specific time and slot uh, on a Google Doc. So find that email from me and sign up. We have slots open, lots of slots open tomorrow and moving forward. So for those of you who've already done that, thank you very much. Um, we'll be starting those conversations today right after class. And then all through this week and all through next week, so please sign up for a time. We look forward to talking with you. When I say we, Autumn and I will be there um, and we'll be ready to converse with you and your TAs if they come along. I got notification that the SRTEs are open for this class as well as for your TA class, the, the lab section. So the one that I look at, the one that is most important is the one for BISI 3. And I take those very seriously. The, the information that you give me on the SRTE, um, it goes to the biology department so they see what's happening for all of you um, in this class. And as I say, I take that information very seriously. But on the SRTE, it doesn't give you a lot of place for suggestions. It gives you place for comments, but it doesn't give you place for suggestions. And so I give this, because it matters so much to me, getting your feedback on how this class can be more powerful for students moving forward in the future. The final blog prompt is up. It's called Coach Us. And I really value your input. So I'm asking you, please, to do the SRTE and to do the blog prompt. Even if this is the only blog prompt that you do all semester, this is a place where you can suggest improvements. So pick an area, you know, considering all the various elements of this class, the readings, the journals, the labs, the classes in this room, the, the Canvas site, the culture, the administration, the grading, the extra credit movies, all of those, whatever it is that comes up for you, pick one area that improvements could be made and offer your ideas how we do that. And the class just continues to get better and better because people that have sat in these seats have made suggestions and we've worked them into the class. 
and it's really valuable. So it's your opportunity to make change here. So that's available to you, the blog, and you can access that through Canvas. So then moving on to today's, today's topic, the question of identity. It's a big one. Who am I? Such a big question, you know, that wars get started over people and their identity and what is valuable to them, what they hold dear. And it's a, also a place where people come together around their identity. It's really a powerful thing. So we make these assumptions sometimes based on categories. And what we're going to try to do today is dig deeper into what really identity is, not just these big categories, right? So I'd like you on your page for today, I'd like you to write down the first two things that come to mind for you about who am I? Who am I? And once you have those two down, once you have those two down, then take a quiet minute to yourself and dig a little bit deeper and come up with two more. Who am I? So what we've been getting at, this topic has run through this entire semester of this course. The identity, our identity, right? It's been the topic all along. And so now today we're kind of coming to, coming to the peak, to the climax of this, of this topic, right? Remember the questions, how we spend our moments is how we spend our days. This, that gets at your identity. The idea of what's your main thing, that gets at your identity. The way that we move through the world, the way that we make choices is all about our identity, right? So there's a chance that your who am I on your sheet there helps you to identify with groups or places or events or people or teams that you might be on. It might identify as a belief system. It might be the place in your family, right? I am a daughter and I am a mom. Those are places, those are things that I could look at as my identity. And yet, there's something deeper that we're going to get at today. We're going to dig deeper into the root. So not just those broad categories right, of, of those things, but we're going to dig into the who am I. So I would love to have a volunteer, um, a volunteer to sort of play with words with me, play with this idea of identity. Anybody who can, wants to volunteer? Excellent. Thanks. So what was one of the things on your list? I'm sorry, you put what? Hispanic? Okay, cool. Thank you. Yes, let's hand him a microphone just so we can. Yes. So as Hispanic, how does that shape your family? You know, how, how does your, let, let me think of a good question. 
Um, how many generations do you know that are Hispanic in your family? Like all of them? Like all of them? Yeah, Fantastic. Like so two. it's a really big part of your, your who you are. Okay. Yeah. And so what does that come out as? Um, how do you celebrate your Hispanicness? Uh, so I live in Miami and it's just like Hispanic. It's just like Cuba too. Um, and we do just a lot of like Christmas stuff. Like that's like, it's a different kind of Christmas. So that's pretty chill. Yeah. Uh, cool. So. Okay. So some special celebrations, yeah. particularly around Christmas. That's cool. Yeah. Are there foods that you eat? Oh yeah. Like totally like Cuban food. That's gas. That's okay. like all I eat when I'm home. Nice. Awesome. I'm excited to talk to you about this. This is cool. So you're from Miami and you're Hispanic. Okay. So how does being Hispanic, um, show up? for you while you're here in Pennsylvania? Uh, they put me in Spanish class, so I'm not gonna lie, like that's pretty easy. <laughs> um, Good. What I don't else? know, I was like more tan than other people when yeah, I came up here. Yeah, more tan. So pretty do you chill. get questions about that? No, not really. Okay, all right. And so does it, are there any other, do you hang out with people of that group? I mean, sometimes, yeah. Like, sometimes, cool. Spanish, Spanish, so, so it's just that people that have things in common often spend time together, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and yet, if you, you know, those choices that you're making about the celebrations that you continue to do, um, it's more about the things that you're doing and not just being, right? It could be just any title that you're giving yourself. And so it shows up. So what's, do you have a favorite, like what do you identify with most as being Hispanic? Cuban, because that's where they're from. I, Cuba, is yeah. that what you said? Okay, yeah. cool. I'm sorry, my microphone isn't working You're right. Good. Okay, thanks. Okay, so have you visited there? Yeah, it's honestly pretty depressing. Yeah. I don't recommend anyone really goes. Okay, interesting. <laughs> What's depressing about it? What's uh, sad like, there? you go there and I'm like, I see my family, and it's like, bam, like I have AC and like a TV in my house and their computers from like 1995. And like my cousin's a doctor and she makes like 60 bucks a month, so that's pretty sad. Yeah, that must be really hard to see. And so part of that story for you is also having moved, you know, from your family has moved from there. And so that's a big story for you. Thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate it. Yeah. So it's not just about the title, right? His identity isn't Hispanic. He identifies with that group of people, but it shapes the things that he does, the way that he acts in the world, the things that he celebrates, right? So it's a matter of digging in to the who am I, what's underneath that. So where we've already been in this class is here. Most of us go through all the way through life as complete strangers to ourselves. So we've learned about where we're coming from. And through your journal work, you have, have made some big strides about who you are, right? What has the cosmos told us? This was the very beginning of this class. Cosmos, we've covered this. You are ancient, right? You come forth out of this generative creativity of the universe. It's a pretty powerful place. The stars are your ancestors. We're connected with everything around us. How does that shape your identity? I'd like you to talk to your neighbor about that. Gotta ditch this one. Nope. Thank you. Try it. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Yes. Let's try one. It's like a gamble. Thank you for that. I still don't know the difference between that mic and that mic. This one just helps me to hear.
Would anybody like to speak to this? How being part of the cosmos shapes who you are. Microphone's coming. So one of my favorite quotes is by Isaac Newton. It's, if I've seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm. And I really like that because anything good or wholesome about me is just simply a product of like the hundreds or thousands of people I've come across like in my 21 years of living. So I think it's really important, like the people that I spend my time with and people I surround myself with are simply a, like, they rub off on me. Like my entire lab group, like they all like are a part of me. Like you're a part of me, my TA is. Like everyone I come across is who I am. So I think it's really important to surround yourself with those good people. Mm. And I think anything good about me is just because of all of these great people that I've met in my life. So I really like that quote. That's beautiful, thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to speak to this? The idea of identifying with the cosmos? Okay, then we'll go on to the next one. So where else have we been? And this ties in, this is a beautiful segue from what she just said, that you are one unique being in this giant community of beings that live on this planet, right? We think of ourselves as earthlings, but all of the earthlings, the animals and the plants and the bacteria and the fungi, you're just one of a bazillion, right? One of a bazillion. So when you think about the fact that no one has ever been like you and no one will ever be like you again, um, how does that feel that you are one unique being in the midst of all of this community? that we're part of. So how does that shape your identity? Talk to your neighbor again. Would anyone like to speak to this? What have you discovered over the course of the semester about your, how you identify? Sorry, I'm being judged by some of my classmates. <sighs> um, and yeah, I know. We were actually talking about how everyone, not that I'm dissing any of this, but like we were saying how like everyone's unique in their own way, but like how is that unique? <laughs> you know, because like if, if we're all unique, like right. what's so special about being unique? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> thank you. It's great. Yeah. Anybody else have thoughts? That's like a deep conundrum question. Like you can totally go around and around and back around with that one. Yeah. So your identity based on other beings on this planet. <coughs> Something else that goes into it. So then what about, what does culture tell you? Right? What does our culture tell us or what does it feel like they tell us? So think about that for a moment. How 
does our identity play into this, right? Or play off of this? When we have these um, categories, right? These labels that we're put on us sometimes or that we put on ourselves based on culture, it can be a very, uh, it can be a really hard challenge, challenging thing. So what I'm talking about is we're, we're in a time of really dramatic culture shifts right now. We're moving through a passageway from one story into a new story. And yet with these labels that we have put on ourselves or other people have put on us, we need to face the idea of stereotyping, right? And what's the idea of stereotype threat? So how does that impact us? Stereotype threat being this psychological phenomenon where an individual feels like they have to fit into a box or that they have to be able to break out of that box. So here's an example. My son Isaac is 6'4". He is athletic and yet he never played basketball in high school. But the number one question people ask him is, hey, dude, you, I bet you, sh you know, you play basketball. You shoot hoops, right? He's like, no, I, I, I enjoy doing that for fun, but like I didn't do it in high school and I didn't like, and so he has this choice of, you know, he feels like he should have done it that he, because people put him in that box and yet that wasn't his thing. And so that feels like a very minor example. It becomes even more dramatic when we're talking about things like, like intelligence. People that are of different races are lower intelligence. They get put into that box. And so then they might feel pressure that they have to prove themselves to go outside of that box. So it happens with music, it happens with sports, it happens with academics, it happens with all kinds of different categories. And so, you know, the idea that women are weaker in math and science, what do we do with that information? The, the idea that men can't show emotions because they're men, they have to be strong. Those are boxes that we're put into by our culture. And those things shape our identity and how we think about ourselves and how we think about other people and so I'd like to show you um, an ecological identity project that, um, that someone did. This is from back in 2017, but I think it's such a beautiful uh, example of what we're talking about here. The fabrication of our identification comes as a new setback to this generation. Buy this, purchase those, consume that, invest in these. It is no wonder that we cannot ponder and let the mind wander the weight of our actions because you see our actions are not our own, they're not homegrown, and we are all just part of society's drone. It's not until you realize, using your real eyes, that the story is something that we can revise. Sister and brother all come from Earth Mother to unite with one another. Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism. The way that we preach is how society will teach. And is it really a reach that they are all the same, born of the same flame, all united by one aim? Preach salvation to ensure there's no deviation from the mold of creation as society's citation. Silence is what we know. It's how we learn to grow, but we will never learn to glow. If noise is what is distressing, then it is quite depressing because we can cheer for the football game, but to preach sustainability is lame. Humans are for respecting all other beings are below. This is society's echo when we tear through the earth looking for coal. I live with earth. I don't simple-mindedly see what she can be worth, thus reducing her girth. To diminish the gifts left to us by years of shifts and ocean waves protected by the braves, the earth cannot always forgive. This is no way to live because at some point she will have no more to give. Drink your milk so you can grow, get your calcium so you have strong bones, curl your hair, paint your nails, make the boys stare, compete with other females. But what can I drink for my soul? What nutrient will help my spirit grow? What beauty product do I use to make my inner beauty glow? When you told me I can't live my dream job because I came out a girl, you put my life into a whirl. 2017, the year of progression, but what about all the inequality still unseen? We still have suppression. 
Black lives matter, but so do blue. You can be a CEO, but not if by you, you mean a girl. Before I even exited the womb, society planned my life from birth to the tomb. Society decided I was gonna perform ballet. My voice I would have to downplay and I would marry a rich man and work at home someday. Is this my ecological identity? Is this the earth left for me? Is this gonna be my legacy? As long as you don't let yourself slide and become blind to the truth, allowing others sell to you how you should do you and give you fake news because it's better to all share the same views. This way, no one can refuse the societal cues to accuse brother and sister for crimes and twos because they don't have the color of skin that society can excuse. Society tells me to sit down, to always hide my frown and to keep my feelings bound. Well then, I have a message for society too, because it's not until you realize, using your real eyes, a story is something that you can revise. Society cannot control me. I am a being, I am free, and I identify as me. Hide my pain, keep my opinions in vain, stay in society's lane. You're pretty, you're slender, you're tall, you're attractive. This is what society named me. Appearances is all that matters, it appears to be. But I cannot be claimed and I will go to the grave before I'm ashamed for not being what society named. I cannot be perfect and I'll never be the same and I'll never fit into society's main frame. I identify as a storm, I identify as outside the norm and I will not conform. I am the wind in the trees, I am an ocean's breeze, I am the lake in winter you see freeze. I am no one's pawn, my presence cannot be withdrawn. I can say that I am me with pride because I can put society aside, allow my soul to be my guide. I am the stars in the night sky, I am the sun you kiss goodbye, I am a mountain standing high, I'm energetic, I'm blunt, I'm curious, I'm empathetic, I am more than what appears to be and my soul is deeper than the sea. It is not until you realize, using your real eyes, a story is something that you can revise. I am a being, I am free, and I identify as me. Who are you? a lot. She unpacks a lot in that four minutes. The idea of identity. So another approach to this question, who am I, <clears throat> pardon me, is also figuring out what we are not. So who am I not? We'll break these down a little bit. I am not my name, right? I'm not my name. I could be named absolutely anything. Names change. My last name has changed a lot of times. Not something I'm proud of, but I've still been me the whole time, right? I'm not my name. It's not your true essence. My name has shaped my identity. Being a Jennifer in the midst of millions of Jennifers has been tricky for me. Um, and so it has shaped a little bit about who I am, how I act in the world. I'm not my body, right? I'm not my body. Cells change constantly, right? There's the epidermis, our outside skin sees wear and tear all the time. Our skin cells rejuvenate every two to four weeks. Our liver acts as our detoxifier in our body purifying a wide variety of contaminants from our systems. It's true that the liver cells rejuvenate themselves every 150 to 500 days. So essentially new, brand new. Stomach and intestines constantly battle, battered by corrosives like stomach acids. The, the, our stomach lining rejuvenates, rejuvenates itself every five days. So I have a friend, I had a friend named Will, and he had, had to have his stomach removed because it was cancerous. And he learned very deeply that he is not his body, right? He is not his body. He is not the cancer that is working in his body. His spirit, it's still him, right? He didn't identify, his identity was not a man with cancer. So I'm not my possessions, 
and not the things that I own. Those things might show up as things that show me, you know, are, that demonstrate things that I like, things that are part of me, but I'm not my possessions. I'm not my social media profile. I think all of you know that, that what shows up on other people's Snap or Insta or wherever it is, that, that that's just a snippet, right? Those are just snippets in time. That's not who they are. It's not the complete identity of that person. I'm not my thoughts. This is a tricky one, right? Our thoughts can change all the time. So you can confirm this by simply being an observer of your thoughts. The next time you're walking down the street, you can think, you know, or, or pay attention, listen to what's happening with your thoughts. Right? It's warm out. I should have worn shorts. Oh, I should have brought a hat today. Who's that guy over there? What's his name? I hate it when I forget names. We have this constant chatter of thoughts going on in our heads. We are not our thoughts. It's like there's a roommate there that's always reacting and responding to what we're doing. So I am not my ego. My ego is what makes me do certain things, but ego is something so much different. It could be that your I am statements are products of your ego. So your ego started to take shape when you were a young child, you know, starting to understand that a certain sequence of nouns, or so, excuse me, of syllables, meant you, that they were talking to you. That sound, those sounds in your mind connected to be, oh, me, right? So this process of being and then understanding owning, that's my teddy bear, that's my blanket, those are the formation of the ego. So then other thoughts relating to your body and your cultural identity and your beliefs, your profession, your family, family roles, all become part of the story of who you see you are, right? But we are more about the, the things that we do than the, the nouns, right? Mom, that's me. Daughter, that's me. But my identity is more about how I show up in those different roles. So when I let go of who I am, I'm able to become what I might be. So letting go of those big categories, we are less those static nouns and more verbs. So it's a lifelong journey getting to this point. So take a minute and see if you can make some notes on your paper now, thinking about your identity in the terms of verbs instead of categories. This is tricky, it can be tricky thinking about breaking down what identity is. So an example for me would be, yes, I am a mom and I am a teacher, but my verb would be nurturing. Right? I chose to be a teacher and I chose to be a mom because me, my identity is nurturing. That's something that I love to do. That's something that I'll never give up doing. Even when I retire and I'm no longer a teacher, I'll still be nurturing. So making those ideas into verbs Do you have questions, thoughts, anything you'd like to share at this point? Okay. 
So letting go of who we are to become what we might be, it's the hero's journey. You'll be talking more about this in your lab this week. So for your final course project, you know, the Ecological Identity Project, thinking about that identity, what are your verbs? What are you doing, right? First, you have to believe that you have one, that you have this connection to the ecos, to the world around you, the nature around you. The eco-identity, the larger story of who you are. And then you're gonna express it creatively. Right? We're gonna be talking about creativity on Wednesday, digging into what that really is. But what I'll say for now is that we are all creative. It's part of our human identity to express ourselves. We have expressed ourselves for thousands of years in ways that are other than, other than words. Does anybody have questions about the Ecological Identity Project that might be helpful for everyone to hear? Okay, you can also take questions to your TAs about this. So I'd like to say a little bit more about my friend Will. Um, these were his ideas. Every moment is golden to the, go, every moment is a golden one to the person that recognizes it. We have a choice to be driven by fear or we have a choice to live in love. We can and will face our fears, but we don't have to choose to live that way. Living in fear. I have to go to college because my parents want me to. That's what they expect. That's a choice out of fear. So what happens when we open to expansive love? Somebody mentioned it in our second unexam about what happens when we really choose to look at life through love. So because of that, his stomach cancer, he had to shift his mindset in very significant ways to understand how he could show up in the world as a person that was also hurting so much. So what he came to understand is that Will's, his focus was to focus on what he was being and not what he was doing, right? So he taught class, he led a lot of conversations, he was part of world in conversations, and yet his point was just being present in the moment, living in integrity, living in a place where we feel like we are using all of equipment, right? So as you dive into your identity and thinking about your ecological identity, think about what it means for you to be completely in your integrity, completely standing within your own being, making choices that are right for you. And so that's Will's message to the world, living in a place of expansive love being in a place of expansive love and seeing what can happen because of it. So some of you have asked for, this is one reason that I bring up Will, some of you have asked for journal options for after this class. The journal has meant much to you. And so what's next? Will wrote this journal um, and this book and they might be things that you might want to explore um, as things to follow up after BiSci 3. So with this in mind, I'll give you your final question today. Beliefs are tho frozen thoughts about yourself and the world. What is the crossroads that you find you are facing right now? How are you going to use what you know about yourself, your identity, to make that choice. <clears throat> I 
Thank you. I hope that you have a beautiful day.